It's like 2 in the afternoon, but this wine is really good. Hi guys, this is Garlic here today. And today I'm just gonna sit down and talk about um, what I do for a living. I know I left this out in my Q&A video and I said I would get back to you on it when I'm ready to talk about it. Um, I've been ready for a while now, I just kept pushing this video back. So um, today it is, I'll just sit down and talk about it. And since I'm making a whole video on it, I thought I was just gonna take you from my first job to what I do now. So it might be a long video and it's gonna take a long time for me to edit, but whatever, we'll do it. And I, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I, I get a lot of questions or comments on my chat, on my YouTube or my Instagram saying, I look really comfortable in my skin or like I look really I look like I have no worries or concerns and right now I I don't not not really I think that's partly because of my job and um, yeah and I'll I'll talk about that you know seriously if you have like a liquor store by your house or if you ever have a chance to go to home plus you know get this wine because it's really good it doesn't the label is kind of gothic and it doesn't look that good but it's really good i'll start from my high school i always grew up not really knowing what i wanted my in my life i know a lot of people they have a clear goal of what they want to do or what kind of career they want to have since they were young but i didn't have that. I knew I wanted to go to a fashion school but my parents were like no over my dead body and, and I didn't have a portfolio or I didn't have any experience or I didn't know anything about art school so I was like okay and I'll just go to a regular university because they said after you graduate college we're not gonna tell you what to do in your life but college you need to go to a regular university what they said was you can do fashion after college too so I went to a university of Wisconsin Madison in my last Q&A video I got a lot of comments from badgers so hi i know the weather right now is perfect i've been talking to my friends from school about how we want to spend our summer in madison but i can't do that anyways i majored in political science and east asian studies um it's not what i like had in mind but i started taking classes that interest me and those were the topics that I was really interested in. I was particularly interested in genocide, uh, but my uh, major is in uh, political science in international relations. That's my major, but my second major is East Asian studies, uh, which wasn't my plan, but I took enough classes to have it as my major, and that's how, how I came to have double majors. I graduated in May 2012 and I spent the last semester in Korea at Yonsei University because uh, one because I always wanted to experience campus life in Korea and second because I thought it would help me to look for a job in Korea so I don't have any gap between graduation and work I did get a job right away in August yeah, I was. I got a job as an intern at a film company. It was a company that imports movies from foreign countries and distribute them in Korea. Like it was always my dream. Like I knew I would want to work in this entertainment industry because that's like I love watching movies and I love writing, and it was a lot of fun. I'm sorry, it's too hot. It was a lot of fun working there but I only worked there for two months um, because the company was too small and we didn't have that much work to do so and my boss wasn't that professional there was only like five people including myself in the company and we we didn't have that much work to do and so that's why I quit there after two months and my next official job because technically that was an intern. My first official job was was an administrator at a technology institute. Honestly, I knew from the beginning that I would like I would not like that job, um, and I didn't. I ended up hating that job. I I worked there for about a year. I was in business management team for the first six months, and the next six months I was in human resources team. 
and I really didn't like that job at all. I really didn't. Um, the only reason why, and I know this sounds pathetic to some people, the only reason why I applied for that job in the first place was because my dad told me to. And I was on bad terms with my dad. I wouldn't talk to him for six months out of the whole year. And my dad recommended that I apply there. And he said this to my mom. And my mom told me. I was just kind of sick and tired of fighting with him all the time. So I thought, you know, okay, I would apply and I won't get it and everything would be fine. So I applied and <laughs> I ended up getting the job. So because my parents really wanted it and I guess I was, okay, I'll give it a go. And if the job was in Daejeon, which is the city that my parents live in. I've been living on my own since I was 20 years old. I kind of missed living with my whole family, so that's part of the reason why I took the job. So that's why um, I got the job as an administrator and I hated every single moment of working there. Not only did I hate the work, but I also hated the people that I had to work with. Um, the job itself was very, very boring. I know some people would enjoy it and they do do this for a living now, but I didn't like it. So I wanted to quit six months after I started working, but I couldn't tell my parents. I told my parents that I wanted to quit. I told them, you know, I gave it a go. I tried my best. I don't like it. I wanted to just start looking for a new job. And they said no. They like, they wouldn't let me quit my job. And, I, and then I said, you know, it's my job. And it's, it's what I have to do for the rest of my life. Like, what if you don't get a new job for a long time? And what happens then? So they told me to look for a job while I was working there. But it was impossible to look for another job. You know, I was just so drained from working. And if when I got home, I just wanted to sleep. And, you know, in my head, I was thinking, when I find a job that I really like and what I can do for the rest of my life, I'm going to have to work until my retirement, which is like 60 something, right? So what is the big deal? Like what would be a big deal for me to take some time off before my next job? But it was really stressful for me because I didn't have the courage to go against my parents' will. I always thought that I was the crazy one in my family, but I realized then that I, I've been living my life just as my parents told me to. And I really hated it working there. I lost like 10 pounds in like one month and I didn't eat, I didn't sleep because I was so stressed out. I remember sitting in my office one day, I remember it being November. I was in my office in November by myself and I was thinking, gosh, you know, if I'm still here next November thinking the same thing, I'm just gonna kill myself. This is where I spend most of my day, more than half of my day, and I hate being here. So my parents were like, work is not fun. Like nobody enjoys their job, but no, 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 it's not about enjoying my job. I hate it. But I wasn't, it, I wasn't suicidal or anything. I was just trying to ensure myself that it was not a big deal to quit it. I. I quit my job in January and I told my parents about it two weeks before I actually stopped going to work because I knew they were gonna be like, oh, I'll take it back, you can't do that. So I, I told them two weeks before I actually stopped going and of course my parents were like, take it back, but it was too late to take it back. So I stopped going and my dad didn't talk to me for three months. We were living in the same house, but he wouldn't look at me, he wouldn't talk to me. He would, you know, treat me as I was invisible, but I got what I wanted, I quit my job. So um, I didn't have anything to say. So I took a, I took a year off before my next job and I did work at a film festival for three months in between. I worked at Jeonju International Film Festival which is an fe international film festival held in Jeonju, is a city down in South Korea. I don't know what the occupation is called in, Kore in English but I had to check all the subtitles and s see if there was any mistranslations or if, if any everything was correct. Uh, so I got to watch like hundreds of movies while I was working there. Because the festival is only for a week, uh, the duration of my job was for three months. It was a lot of fun actually. I got to watch tons and tons of movies. 
there are a lot of people who do this for a living like um, not not as a temporary job I thought about that because I really like the job but people who who do this for a living they move from one festival to the other so from March to May June there's Cheonju International Film Festival and then from like uh, June to August or I'm not sure about the exact time period but the, from June to August there is Putan International Film Festival and then f in the in the fall there is Busan International Film Festival and in winter there's a festival in Thailand so a lot of the co-workers that I worked with at, at uh, at the festival they moved from festival to festival from city to city and they repeat that on yearly basis I, I decided I couldn't do that because I had two cats and it would be difficult for me to move from city to city with my cats and I, w I can't imagine leaving them with my parents all the time so so I thought you know that's not the job for me and also because when I was in the States I always felt like a foreigner so I really wanted to settle down when I come back to Korea so I thought you know this lifestyle of constantly moving wasn't the best lifestyle for me so that ended as a one-time experience but I really like the job and then I came back and I started to think about what I really wanted to do for the rest of my life this one thing that I can do for the rest of my life and I, I thought and thought and I, I decided that I would want to write I really like writing. I've been writing stories um, and di novels, diaries since since I was so so young and this is something this is the only thing that I had been doing for for my for my entire life. This was the only thing. I I thought my next job would be a writer. Anything any job that lets me write like I thought magazine was a fun choice one company was hiring so I, and I applied and it was men's magazine called Maxim and I got the job and it was a lot of fun I got to write all these cool articles and uh, because I was an editor and you have so many things that you have to do as an editor like I got to meet celebrities I got to meet models makeup artists photographers and I really enjoyed the job but I quit because um, they give you so little like they give you such little money and they make you work so hard I had so many nighters before deadline and I was like this is what I want to do but is this worth the money because I feel like I could make m more money by doing like a part-time job at a grocery store and I was creating contents that not necessarily what I really wanted I would have fitted better in, in, in a woman's magazine I had a hard time thinking of ideas and that was one of the difficulties I had and I, I thought you know this doesn't interest me I'm not interested in like men's gear or like men's grooming like their fashion or their clothes and I thought you know I was creating content and I thought you know I could be the content I could be I could actually be a better content like why can I just make contents that I want with me in it some of you know this but I had a blog like back when I was working at the Technology Institute. At the time, everybody was moving from blog to YouTube and I did do that and I did make like two videos on YouTube. Then I quit because I was sick for a little bit and then um, I was never, I never, I, I got too lazy to make another one. And you know, after I quit, what I concluded from that experience was no more company. I'm not gonna go work for a company because first, I hate having to get up in the morning every single day. And second, I hate working with other people. I hate other people. Oh. And I know this is like my ultimate thing that's never gonna change is that I want to be a freelance. I don't want to go to a company, I don't want to work for anybody, I want to create my own thing and do my own thing. So that's why I started YouTube again because I can create contents and you know I have a lot of fun doing it and I know it's been less than a year since I started my YouTube channel but I still have a lot of fun, I still have tons of things that I want to create on my channel but unless you have like 
this certain number of subscribers it's really hard to make money off of youtube uh for now when i first started youtube i also started working at a english academy to teach english i was teaching english at the time when i made the q a video and the reason why and the only reason why i couldn't tell you what i did for a living was because i hadn't told my parents that i quit maxim because i don't want them going like i told you or like you said this is what you wanted to do what are you going to do now you should just do whatever whatever we tell you to and and they did when they found out so I didn't want to tell them and I didn't want them to find out about it through my YouTube video which they didn't even know existed and I know they watch videos on YouTube all the time on their iPads they they each have an iPad on their own so they always they're always on their iPads watching videos on YouTube and who knows like it's a I know they didn't know about my channel but you they could find out about my channel and I didn't want them to find out that I quit my job through <laughs> through my video I wanted to tell them uh, myself I told them last April and they didn't take it well again but they they're never gonna take it well so um, yeah so now I can tell you guys what I do I I teach English 101 and I also translate articles powerpoints and any documents for companies and yeah I also make YouTube videos yeah, I think those are the three occupations I have now. Um, so that's how I make a living right now. And yeah, I'm much happier now than I ever was at my old jobs. Of course, I made much more money, like especially that technology institute. I made so much money. Like I saved up a lot when I was working there. That's why I didn't have to work for a year, entire year after quitting that job because I had so much money left. I'm so much happier now because it's just what I like to do and I can choose my work, I can do my own thing. But I, it was a really difficult time when I first quit Maxim because I didn't have any work to do. So I just kind of felt really depressed and I kind of felt useless in the world because like I didn't have anywhere to go, I didn't have anyone to call me except my boyfriend and when I started to think about what uh, my role is in this world like I felt like I was lost without my job but that's not my job isn't who I am you know it's it's my job it's how I make money it's not just because I don't have a job doesn't mean I'm useless so I started to really think about that but I was really depressed it was, a, it was probably the most difficult time of my life and I quit last August so like from August to December was the hardest period of my life and I wouldn't want to ever go back to that period but um, I don't regret quitting like at all but there if there's one thing that is good about me is that i never regret anything like i don't look back on my past choices and think what if i did this or what if i chose a different path i never think about that and that doesn't mean i make the best decision all the time but i make a decision and i try to work to make that the best decision I could have ever made. No, even if it wasn't the best decision, at least I learned from it. I think, you know, I really think this. Um, I would rather make as many mistakes as I can possibly make when I'm younger than to make them when I'm older, you know? Or it would take more responsibilities and more energy out of you when you're younger, uh, when you're older. Honestly though, like, I don't believe there is a mistake in life. I, whenever I go through like a difficult phase of my life, I always take that as my stepping stone to the next step. And I always take it that way because, you know, you can't go back, it's life and you have to learn from it. And that's the best you can do to learn from your mistakes if you ever make them. I just realized that, uh, you know, you're not gonna die. Even when I quit Maxin, like I didn't have any work to do. I I couldn't even pay my rent one time but you know you're not gonna die and my life is gonna work work its way through um, eventually and it's worked out great and you know I'm happy with who I am and where I stand I just want to put this message out there like to tell you that it's okay to be confused with what you want to do like it, it's okay to be 
depressed about where you are now because you're gonna make your way through you know it's not it's not a big deal like when you look at your entire life it's not gonna be a big deal it might be a phase that's really difficult for you but you know it's okay like everything's okay and I wish I would have started this the first time I, I don't I said I don't regret it but like I think I went around too much to do what I wanted to do. If you want to do something, then just do that. Don't go around it because this is too difficult to achieve. There is no way around it. And I wish I could have just started this, you know, in the first place, like because this is eventually where I ended up in. Like if I can help one person by making this video, then I've completed my purpose. So, yeah, so that has been my video. I think it's gonna be a long... I've been filming for like the past 40 minutes, but I'm gonna cut it down and hopefully make it um, like 20 minutes. Oh, but that's gonna be so much work, like trying to put it all the subtitles. Oh. Okay, anyway, so that's the end of my video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please write them down below. And you can also email me. Um, with your problems. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Was that too bubbly? And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.